Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled The Rotterdam Ripresa, Future Fragments for the Neoliberal City, edited by Marius Brutfeld and published by Architettura et Natura and Lemon Press. Out with the old, in with the new. In its post-war development, Rotterdam shows itself as a city in constant renewal, first rebuilding that which was actually lost, later renewing that which was old and outdated. The new city was planned by administrative entities at a large scale and evoked a shared vision of the future. The neoliberal city was born, a city comprised of iconic fragments instead of coherent ensembles, a kaleidoscopic coalescence of Renaissance palaces, high-tech residential towers, formal office blocks and bold market halls, building back better and building back faster. But now this cycle of growth and renewal may well be coming to an end. We have reached the limits of what our planet can bear. Having tried to grow ourselves out of the problem by building new and green, the habit to replace the old and the carbon it demands still weighs heavy. Waking up to the idea of a post-growth society, we should not ask ourselves how to renew, but rather how to augment, how to adapt, not to replace. Can the city change while remaining the same? To find the new in the all may well be the most sustainable thing of all. We have been here before. For the exhibition Roma Interrotta 1978, 12 leading architectural practices of the time developed new proposals for the city, not for the Rome of their own time, but for the Rome of an unspoiled past. The group resorted to Giambattista Nolli's Nuova Pianta 1748 as the basis for a new vision for the city. Nolly's figure ground plan and the Baroque city depicts played a central role in the debate on urbanism in the 1970s. The participants, including Paolo Portoghesi, James Sterling, Venturi and Rauch, Aldo Rossi, Colin Rowe, Michael Graves and the Creer brothers, each developed an alternative history for one of the 12 sections that the map consisted of. No small plans were made. Large figures, patterns and other collage elements slice through the old city fabric, taking on the form of the modern, the ancient and everything in between. Central to all these interventions is the idea of the urban fragment as an incomplete figure that resonates with and gives new meaning to the pre-existing historical shards that the collage city is comprised of. Change the fragment, change the city. Government planned reconstruction was making way for market driven economics, resulting in a city that would only be shaped one development, one fragment at a time. As a result, the planned city became the collage city, and with it, the architect engineer became the architect bricoleur, a concept originally introduced by French anthropologist Claude Levi Strauss at the beginning of his 1962 book La Pensée Sauvage. The engineer imagines his projects in the context of the universal laws that he imposes on reality. The engineer has no limit to his invention and the materials or tools needed to solve the problems at hand. Form always follows function. In contrast to the engineer, the bricoleur tries to discover new significance and possibilities in what he finds. His tools and materials bear no relation to the task in question, as they are themselves the result of previous constructions. Far removed from the reality of 1978, the participants felt a need to revert back to Nolly's less entropic version of the city for their fragments to resonate properly. It's easy to think of sweeping visions with the abstracted reality of this graphic plan. 
the major revisions by kings and fascists and the fragmentary speculative development that had occurred since were bypassed by an unspoiled version of the city. To favor the abstracted plan of the past over the messy city of today is to favor the mind of the engineer over the mind of the bricoleur, an outdated view for dealing with our limited resources and our constrained cities. The same is true of what came before, the contemporary urban landscape of disorderly ad hoc development is strongly reminiscent of the generally incoherent medieval origins of our cities. Historically, fast-growing towns were driven by a practical need to grow, often guided by the economic potential of their own expansion. It is only later in the life of a city that meaningful relations between these inconsistent developments were made. A looser attitude towards authorship allowed for the fragmentary remodeling of existing structures. The lack of a hard line between designing and building allowed projects to develop gradually, amending the layers that came before into coherent ensembles, one fragment at a time. Such developments were often initiated by individuals or institutions opportunistically seeking to anchor their presence in the legacy of the city. With it, the small grain of the developing city was transformed into a cohesive fabric, a close-knit city as an amalgam of parts, larger and smaller, held together by the newly introduced fragments of resonance rewriting the city in favor of its developers. The notion of the complete design only came about in 1485, when Leon Battista Alberti talked about a perfect, immutable form. He stated, Beauty is that reasoned harmony of all the parts within a body, so that nothing may be added, taken away or altered, but for the worse. Alberti argued that a building should always reflect the architect's original thoughts so that it would grant him enduring honor and fame. This ideal only fully came to fruition in the 19th century and has become an intrinsic truth in our profession today, finding its pinnacle in the star architects of the early 2000s. It is a truth that we should declare false, a theory of fragments would held more. Since the economic crisis of 2008 and the building crisis that followed in 2012, we have already set upon this path. After the sudden burst of large-scale development, architects had found new meaning in a closer reading of the pre-constrained city. Rather than a metamorphosis, a replacing of the existing city, architects have sought to create a symbiotic relationship with the surroundings in which they operate, weaving their designs into the layers of the existing fabric, finding new connections rather than dividing it further, affecting a lot by changing very little. Perhaps by expanding the notion of authorship and accepting the otherness, not to be rejected but to be embraced, the city can be read as a multi-layered cadaver skis, where the collected whole is authored by all, or rather, by none. Replacing solitary authorship with a symbiotic alternative will allow us to move freely within the entropy of our neoliberal cities, recombining its pieces rather than dividing it farther. This is not an argument against uh, market-driven developments, but rather a questioning of the building as a singular authorial object. How can fragmentary interventions and a denial of authorship contribute to an impactful narrative that resonates in the city, allowing us to reinvent it without replacing it yet again? Rather than an interrupted Rome, Rotterdam Ripresa proposes a continued Rotterdam, accepting the pre-constrained complexities in the city of today, not just the pleasant past, but also the impudent present. Rotterdam Ripresa adopts an alternative method towards the production of grand visions for the city, an urbanism of fragmentary interventions as missing links completing found ensembles that never were but always could have been. 
The outcomes are not the result of autocratic planning, but come together through adaptive fragments implemented in an iterative, multi-authored manner. Rather than an endless rebuilding, the city is amended through bricolage, with a healthy dose of opportunism, finding new ways to connect the incoherent developments within the city. Like the city, Roma Ripresa represents a kaleidoscopic collection of practices, young and old, upcoming and established, and of many backgrounds. Each was presented with a view of Rotterdam contained within the fire limits of the Second World War bombardment. Here, the city was rebuilt from newly nothing into the spoiled city we find today. Each of the 12 views have been worked on by five practices, producing iterative layers of modification onto the prior states of design. The brief was to amend, working with and in the style of the city. The proposals are both surreal and realistic, stimulating the imagination of a parallel future for the city. Some fragments aim to mediate, filling in what was supposed to arise in between, imagining the city as a great seriation. Some aid to unify, smartly connecting the structures found into seemingly larger holes. Some aim to multiply, emphasizing and furthering Latin patterns towards new conventions of the place. Some aim to fragment further, subdividing all major developments until the city resides in a quiet state of entropy. All of the interventions adhere to the same neoliberal ideals of preferred expansion, anchoring presence and casual decision-making. Incidentally, the city benefits not only in its visual cohesion and the larger stories told, but also in a sense of collectivity and meaningful answers to our post-growth society. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.